is not a ride sharing video. What up, folks? Once again, it's your boy Tim, the handsome liberal. Today, we got an interesting topic that I want to run by the folks because this certainly will be controversial for those who watch, who tune in, who enjoy right wing media. It's going to be all over the place and probably lead to some sort of outrage. What are we talking about? It is seems that the police chief of the L.A. Po police, the Los Angeles police chief, has banned the display of the thin blue line flag for all of his police department in public. You probably recognize the thin blue line flag has become increasingly popular over the last decade or so. It is an American flag with a blue line representing one of the stars across the flag. Well, the police chief in Los Angeles has banned and prohibited his own police force from displaying this flag in public. Why is that? Well, according to the police chief, if I can get my notes correctly, and by the way, folks, tap the screen. This is a MAGA-friendly program. I do not ban, block, or censor anyone for their commentary. MAGA are my preferred guests. Nevertheless, liberals are welcome as well. Tap the screen. Get your boy up to 5,000 likes. Bring more MAGA into the form. So why would they ban the Blue Lives Matter flag? Why would an actual police chief ban the Blue Lives Matter flag, the American flag with a blue stripe across it? Well, according to the police chief, I believe his name is Michael Moore, and he's a Caucasian guy. I thought he was African-American until I did my research. But he states that the flag sim is, has basically become a symbol of far-right ex extremism. He's stating that the flag is also now tied to white supremacy. And, of course... We know the Blue Lives Matter movement and things like that. So I want to go and talk to the folks. By the way, feel free to come in the box. I always give you the solemn promise I will not ban, block, or censor your commentary. Regardless if you agree with the host, nobody gives a damn. I'll give you plenty of time to state your point. But do you see the Blue Lives Matter flag? as somehow promoting intolerance, promoting racism, being anti-minority in any way. Looking in the comments, uh, bro, that cap, <laughs> I, I get talk. The, the cap is, let me make it clear about the cap just before we get into the commentary. You see the name of the program, so let it not be, you know, let it not be confusing what side of the aisle your humble correspondent leans on. I am a liberal. However, the purpose of the hat, I do not believe conservatives, right-wingers, and particularly MAGA get a fair play oftentimes in the mainstream media. They often get canceled, blocked, banned, and censored before even being able to state their point. Here on my program, in my tiny corner of social media, I always make the solemn promise, even if I disagree with you politically, I will never ban or block your commentary. I believe you are entitled to free speech rights just as much as yours truly. That is the purpose of the cap, to symbolize to folks on the other side of the aisle, particularly MAGA, you are absolutely welcome here, and there will never be any fear of being banned, censored, or blocked by yours truly. So... In regards to the flag, do you see it as being some form of a symbolization of hate? Or do you see the police chief banning the Blue Lives Matter flag or the, or the thin blue line flag? Rather, It's not a Blue Lives Matter flag per se. I understand uh, the language gets tied into the flag quite often, but the flag itself is referred to as the thin blue line flag. Do you see that flag as promoting hatred, promoting racism? That's what we're going to talk about. In the comments, uh, Grandpa Anthony says, I don't think so. Listen, even as a liberal, an African American, I do believe police should be held accountable and often go above and beyond in terms of, you know, roughing up folks and things like that. I've never, I never thought the flag, the thin blue line flag was a symbol of racism. However, there is a good point to be made. We'll tackle that as folks come on. Uh, you think Massa Trump? You're going to fix this mess we're in. Jay Black, I do not even know if Trump is going to be reelected. He has an uphill battle just to get back in the White House. Nevertheless, 
The more shit that comes out of Biden's closet, the better his chances are. The biggest thorn in Trump's side, barring a few months ago, was probably the fact that he had classified documents in his possession, which could have led him, if convicted, to not be allowed to run for president again. Now that we've found out all of this stuff about Biden, I don't believe the case against Trump has any weight to it anymore. I believe that the situation Biden has put himself in has oozed all of the excitement, enthusiasm, and chances for a conviction out of Trump. Now, I get there are differences in regards to Trump did not cooperate with authorities and Biden did. Nevertheless, Trump is not the standard for the violation that took place. The violation is having the documents to begin with. And Biden is guilty of that. So even though Trump did not cooperate with authorities, maybe ran his mouth too much and things of that nature, that doesn't excuse Biden. And you cannot go after Trump without going after Biden. So I do not believe anything is going to come out of the Trump documents case at this point. I just really do not because Trump started out from day one suggesting that he was being treated unfairly. It was a witch hunt. I don't buy into it being a witch hunt, but if Trump gets hung behind this and Biden walks free, it is difficult to argue that they weren't treated the same. I mean, at that point, Trump would now have a point. So I don't believe anything's going to come out of it, but maybe I'm wrong. We'll talk to the folks. Uh, going back to the comments here, and I'll go right to the box. I see somebody's in there. They are two separate things, dude, and you know that they are. 1965 Zerata, they're not two different things. Possession of classified documents is possession of classified documents, period. You can talk about one guy gave his up and one guy didn't. Biden has had documents since he was a senator. Obama and Biden, president, vice president, was inaugurated in January of 2009. So that means uh, that, means that uh Biden was a senator before 2009. So he has documents in his possession that are, that are at least that old. That goes back to at least 2008. That's 15 years ago. You, you can't just turn a blind eye to that. No matter how much you love Biden, no matter how much you may hate Trump, that's 15 years he has had classified material in his possession. Trump is not the standard. I don't care how egregious you believe Trump's activities are. There is a strong possibility that Biden deserves to be held accountable, too. There's no way to look. If you want to call a spade a spade, no matter who's dealing the cards and be fair, you got to look at Biden as well. Certainly when Biden is on TV saying there is no there there and downplaying it. And, the, you know, he's literally saying there's nothing to worry about here while documents are falling out of his pocket. You have to look at that. Being fair. Uh, handsome, just reporting Pence had docs too. Oh my God. You know, in this, in regards to Mike Pence having documents, my guess is a large portion of Washington politicians and former Washington politicians probably have stuff in their houses. I certainly believe that now. And once again, as I just stated, all of this plays to the favor of President Trump. Because in the beginning, we were making it like Trump was doing something unique. Apparently, that is not true. Going to the box. It is Farlow. Two, three. Folks, show your boy some love. Tap the screen. Get your boy up to 5,000 likes. Let your thumbs not be lazy. Bring more MAGA to the forum. Farrow, good afternoon. It's, it's Farlow, but I, I, I get you. Follow my fault. Yeah, two, Sorry. one R, not two. I thought I saw F A R R. So, asking the question: the, the thin blue line flag. Do you believe that represents intolerance, bigotry, or racism in any way? Because they're, they're banning that flag in L A. I, I you can't ask me. I used to be a. Uh, I did a little uncertified work for police, so I, my answer will be biased. Okay, that's fair. I'm a liberal. My answer is biased too. <laughs> oh, but Go as far ahead. as police. It's like asking an ex police officer, do you think it's that's pretty much what I am? Just I just never certified myself. I went into another field. But okay. yeah, the flag the flag is just a representation uh of of law enforcement, Ameri the American police officer. I don't see any problem with that. Are there Fair bad enough. apples? Sure. Sure. Sure there are. 
So, um, so let me let me ask it to you this way, because the, the banning did not come from some liberal politician. It came from the police chief himself. What about the notion he is saying that that flag that you're saying just simply represents the police or support for police officers? What about his notion that it has been hijacked by white supremacists and hate groups? There's a lot of things that have been hijacked by white supremacists and hate groups. Should we ban all those things? Where, where do we draw the examples. line? Give me some examples of things that's been hijacked that you you're talking about. The American flag is one. The Ku Klux Klan used to walk. They didn't walk around with the Confederate flag. They walked around with the American flag. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, there's yeah. a reason why a lot of African Americans do not respect the American flag. Maybe exactly. you're on to something. I'm, yeah. I'm trying to tell you. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. Where do we draw the line? Uh, do we ban everything? That's a good point. Let me let me ask it to you this way, because um, I understand you make a strong point about you can't ban every damn thing. However, when you look at someone like Colin Kaepernick, the athlete taking a knee, even you know a lot of high school and college players have taken a knee during the anthem, and it makes it makes a lot of fanfare, particularly in right wing news. They're always talking about folks that are disrespecting the flag. I have to ask the question: When you do see white supremacist groups as you pointed out, hijacking the thin blue line flag, like with Colin Kaepernick, why aren't there not more cops that speak out against that? Here, here's one. Cole, I'm a 49ers fan first. So mm -hmm. the whole Kaepernick thing pisses me off. The dude got benched, and he was pissed about that. So he was making a name for himself – Thoughting that would bring attention to himself, and it didn't. Nobody ended up picking him up after the season. Well, someone's going to pick me up. Look what I did prior to, to this season, and nobody picked him up. Well, you do realize Colin Kaepernick, while an actual player on the team, was wearing pig socks about police. It wasn't like he got benched and all of a sudden started hating cops. He was complaining about cops even when he was a starter. That's, that's, that is correct. Well, I'm saying when he got benched, he got pissed. He said, I'm going to put it in their face since you want to put okay. me on the bench. So, but that, and that's but that what he did. Take away, and then he okay, got cut. Even if, what, even if what you're saying about Kaepernick is true, that doesn't take away from the comment I'm asking you is that we complain about athletes taking the knee, but when white supremacist groups that you're even admitting hijack the thin blue line flag, why is there no outrage from police officers about that? Because they... There, okay, let me not let me not say that's generaliz generalization. There, there are police officers who are who support what right white supremacists say. Let me say that. But in general, in practice, police officers do not support white supremacists. Where are so they at? you're you're where, trying to where you're, you're are, trying to where lose is the something. Outrage those people? All right. right now, police officers is not a popular um, topic. Right that's, now. That's, yeah, but I, I get, I get so everything you're saying, but let's say, I'm saying... I'm getting, I'm, getting to my answer. I'm getting to my answer. So we go to speak out. They're like, oh, now you want to say something. We're, we're talking about police brutality. We're talking about defunding the police. Now we're talking about white supremacy. Now you want to say something. So they, they can't win for losing. So they just keep their mouth shut and keep it moving. They got other things to worry about. They worry about what's, what someone's hijacking. You're well, about somebody hijacking a car versus a flag. Which was more okay, important so, to you? Okay, so let's take your point that they have other things to worry about other than what someone is hijacking. So now that exactly. the flag has been taken down, why don't they still have other things to worry about? They seem to have time to complain when the flag has got taken down, but when it is being misconstrued, they're too busy. Can, can you explain that? Let me say this. There, there probably are police officers who are speaking against. Let's not no one's naive. There are police. There's not a lot of police officers talking about it. There's not enough police officers talking about it. Right. I'm not sure if you, get a, if you go through TikTok right now, some police officer is talking about it right now on both sides of the issue. Yeah. Well, the, the point I'm trying to make is it, there's not yeah, enough. The point of, yeah, but exactly. That's the point I'm trying to make is when you look at Colin Kaepernick, there is no shortage of outrage, even at Trump rallies of people complaining. There are thin blue line flags that have literally been stitched together with the with the Confederate flag and things like that. And the outrage from police officers is minuscule at best. You just do not hear them complaining about that. Right, but we're acting like the police officers have the 
the thin blue line flag flying at their police departments or on their cars. We don't. Or excuse me, I we, they didn't. At least at the police department I worked at, they didn't. So it's not, it's like, what do you think about this? And we're like, we don't even fly that flag here. So why why are you asking me about something that wait, we're not wait, even wait. doing? You said, you said the police do not have a thin blue line flag. I've seen cops with it on their uniforms. What are you talking about? I'm talking about us. I'm talking about us. No, us at our police department. I'm talking about the police department I work for. It oh, in your some department. Okay, in your department. Yeah, some, some, okay. Yeah, the one, one I work, the one I worked for. Let me be very clear. The one that I I work somewhere else now. The, some, the police okay. department I worked for ha, didn't have it flying above their building. Yes, the the insignia of the flame group line. Yes, that's different from the. I would say that's different from the flag. Because most of the time well, when they're not least, I, I, okay, I do have to move it on, but I got one last question before I move it on. Now yeah. I'm a child yeah. of the seventies and eighties, and when I was a kid, I there was no such thing as Black Lives Matter. Even during the Rodney King, even during the Rodney King incident, no one was yelling Black Lives Matter. That is a recent thing. Some folks are suggesting that the blue, the thin blue line flag only came along as a counter to Black Lives Matter, meaning Blue Lives Matter. My question I'm asking, going to ask you is, is that is there any validity to that, that the only place that flag came along is to counter Black Lives Matter? Because I don't remember seeing a thin blue line flag before the Black it, Lives Matter era. Have you seen been, it? Of course I have. It's been there. Um, okay. uh, counter to Black Lives Matter was Police Lives Matter. Actually, it wasn't the thin blue line flag. It was Police Lives Matter. What about Blue Lives Matter? Lives Matter? What about Blue Lives Matter? But, yeah, that that too. Police Lives Matter and Blue. That's what came out of the Black Lives Matter. And I would I would argue that the Black Panther Party, uh, through their rhetoric, did say the words Black Lives Matter. But that's what the, their whole mantra was: Our Lives Matter too. So I would say that a black the version of Black Lives Matter existed in those those times. They just didn't use the words Black Lives Matter. But you're saying the thin blue line flag has been around long before Black Lives Matter was out. Right, yeah. No, it's it's been there. Now, did it come to the forefront during that time when people were saying Blue Lives Matter? Of course, hey, what, what, what does Blue Lives Matter mean? And you just you start a million bit people want to sell things. I, you know, the crazy thing is, and I, I totally support police. I would never be in favor of defunding them or anything like that. But I don't remember the thin blue line flag. I, you know, grew up, even in my adulthood, I took, you know, I became an adult in the early 90s. I don't remember the, the thin blue line flag at all until all of this chaos with Black Lives Matter and police came up. I don't remember that flag at all. It must have been really obscure if you're suggesting that it was around already. I mean, you can't you can't give out police badges, but you can give out small little flags. Like look look on police officers, families, vehicles. You'll see that insignia on there, and then the police will like, "Do you have a policeman in your family?" It's it's a well known. Um, yeah, but it wasn't insignia. around. Yeah, I get all of that. I understand what you're saying to mean it, but I don't remember this flag in the '90s or the '80s. I don't remember seeing it anywhere. But police weren't being attacked like this prevalently either with social media. Social media wasn't always around. When you got social media, more things come out, more things are scrutin are mi microscope things, small things come out. But then if what yeah, you're saying is in 2014, true, I'm, I'm reading the comments. Yeah, 2014, I would agree. It became bigger in, in 2014. Yeah, well, that's right. The, yeah, that's then you're yeah, kind of saying what, say, what they're saying. You're kind of suggesting yeah. that the Black Lives Matter movement is the reason they threw the flag up as a counter. No, what, what I'm saying is you can't carry badges around unless you're a, a law enforcement, but you can carry that flag around and you can sell those flags. You can make money from those flags. That's what I'm saying. Like the hat you got behind you, you make money from stuff like that. It's it's, it's part of who you are. Like it's part of who Trump is. That's just, that's just one of his phrases, make America great again. How can I sell that? I can put it on T-shirts. I can put it on hats. How can we sell Blue Lives Matter? Well, all we got is this flag. Well, we can sell that. We can't sell badges. Yeah, but there's been. But wait a minute. There's been different ways of raising money under the guys that you support police since there have been police. This thin blue line flag is a totally different entity. Police have been raising money, giving out medallions and things to show support. Is I can think of all sorts of things. Being a citizen of Chicago growing up, they had all sorts of medallions and things you could put on your car saying, I support the police. This flag, though, was not around. All right, I don't know what happened to my last guest, but it must have frozen or something. We'll move it on.
It's their occupation, not their identity. Fair enough. Uh, before I go back to the box, I'll read a couple comments. The flag itself emerged around 2014 as Blue Lives Matter movement grew in prominence, says uh, 5 Ray 12. That is my observation as well. And like I told the last guest, I don't recall seeing the Blue Lives or the Thin Blue Line flag, rather. I don't recall seeing that flag at all in the 80s and 90s. And there were plenty of organizations and outfits showing support for the police the fraternal order of police you could donate money to that organization for decades if not generations and they were not flying that flag they were not waving around a thin blue line flag based on my observations just being candid it does appear as if that flag came along as a counter to black lives matter not as a you know a method of show of police but as an anti you know, an anti-flag to Black Lives Matter. But maybe I'm wrong. Let's go right back to the box. It is Jeff987. Good afternoon. Appreciate you holding there. What do you think? What do you think in regards to the police chief of the Los Angeles Police Department, one of the largest police departments in the country, prohibiting his own officers from displaying the Blue Lives Matter flag? I mean, I think it's terrible. But also, that's California. <laughs> but he's a cop. I understand California is loaded with liberals, but this is a police officer. So we kind of have to take the politics out of it. It's a cop himself. If it was a liberal, if it was a liberal, the argument would be, well, liberals have no support for police or whatever. Yeah, but this is the actual the, chief look, of look, police. Look who's the governor of California, though. Yeah, but we're talking about a police chief. We're talking yeah, the police there chief is no to, one. The chief has to Go do ahead. what the governor says. Oh, he doesn't well the governor there's no proof that the governor or no evidence that the governor suggests they're removing this. I don't I, I just I just came on for your monologue. I thought your monologue was was pretty good. Thank you. Appreciate the documents. Uh, oh yeah, I, I didn't know yeah. about it. I didn't know about the I just heard about that on your show. But also, again, my thing is about it, it's California. So, I mean, I don't know. But as, but as far as the, the documents go. Sure. Uh, Jeff, you dropped out or some case. Both are wrong. And, uh, go ahead. Nah, I can hear you now. You hear me? Yeah, loud and clear. Go ahead. Yeah, I took. I had a phone call just come in, so it's gonna echo. All right, go ahead. I can hear you. I'll let you state your point, and we'll move it on. Go ahead. I'll answer it once we drop. But go ahead. Okay. Un unfortunately, there must be a delay or something going on. Moving on. Um, I wanted to hear what he had to say on the document. So, Jeff, if you uh, once you get rid of your call, you're always welcome back. And as I always say, this is a MAGA friendly program. I do take calls from liberals as well, no denying. But uh, MAGA are my preferred guests. So feel free to come on to the box. As I always say, there will be no banning, blocking, or censored here. First, uh, can't even get it out. But free speech, First Amendment rights are what is. Always, always idolized here. It is paramount here. So understand that whether you agree or disagree with the host never means a damn thing. But if you say something that's outrageous, expect your boy to call you on it. All right, looking in the box, we'll move it on to New Jersey Nightmare. Always good to hear. Nightmare, talk to me. What do you believe, what do you think of them banning in New in uh, Los Angeles, of all places, prohibiting officers from displaying the thin blue line flag. OK, here's the thing. When it comes to a police department within the inner workings of said department, they don't practice democracy. They only help supposedly to enforce it. But when a police chief snaps his fingers and says, get this done, it gets done. If ands or buts. Now, the fact of the matter is, is that you can't. Uh, uh, you're a member of law enforcement. You are sworn to defend and, pr and protect the citizens and to enforce the Constitution. Okay. As such, that flag is a contradiction. You're sworn to the American flag. You're sworn to the American government. 
That's not an official flag of the United States government. Yeah, but That's a, a political not, But wait a minute. They're flying the flag in belief uh, that it shows support for the police. It, they're not taking an oath to the thin blue line flag. I don't see how you're getting that comparison. Because when they're flying that on a uniform and not the normal American flag, that says a lot. It speaks volumes to the people who, who interact with these officers and how they react with the public. So in your humble opinion, because the, the, the chief is saying that, it, that the flag has been hijacked and it symbolizes right-wing extremists. It's been hijacked by white supremacists and things like that. Do you yes. see any validity to what he's saying? Do you believe that's true? Yes, and I'm glad to hear a police chief actually say it. It's refreshing to hear a cop finally own up to this truth. We've known for years already with, with reports out of the FBI that white supremacy has infiltrated law enforcement all over the country at just about every level. Mm -hmm. Time to root them out. So how do you respond to people who suggest that, you know, for the most part, outlawing or ostracizing a thin blue line flag is showing lack of support for police? No, no, I disagree with that completely. We can listen. I've never liked that term defund the police, the hashtag that we've had around for quite some neither time. Have now. I. I think, neither have I. I think it's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. But go ahead. It should have been it should have been reform the police, not defund, reform right. as in reformation, as in breaking it down the system and then building it right back up. But this time with an actual care and compassion towards actually serving and protecting the public and not just crushing skulls. There can't be any more policies within the department where cops are getting paid more for every ID they get to they, 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 they get to write down and put down in their database. Uh, no more extra. I mean, like, like for all, they get paid extra in some departments where they get paid extra for every time they arrest someone or every time they detain so, someone. These are so, bad, bad ideas. So let me ask you this. I don't know if this is the case, but if he's making a good point in the comments. Stevie D, a friend of the program, is saying that. So you can have a Black Lives Matter flag for extremism, but not the thin blue line flag. We live in a clown show. How do you how, how do you respond to that? Whereas, a, let's say, for instance, an officer did display the Black Lives Matter flag. Do you think that should be banned as well under the same belief that Black Lives Matter is an extremist group? I hardly think that an organization that simply wants black people to be treated the same in the law and in the public and that we end discrimination, we end racism, and that, you know, this world, us as humanity, it was always supposed to be. It was always meant to be that all lives matter. But you and I, and history shows us, that's never been true. That's never true. been true. So, so let me let me put on my, my devil's advocate hat, just for, for shits and giggles to, you know, call a strike a strike. In regards to banning the blue, the thin blue line flag, as the chiefs suggested, the flag has now been hijacked by white supremacists and extremist groups. How would you respond to someone that says, yes, Black Lives Matter was originally about equality for African-Americans and minorities, but it has now been hijacked by rioters and looters, and therefore it faces the same type of scrutiny? Can you how would you respond to that? I would say let's take a let's scrutinize the supposed violence and riots that occurred during all these protesting. Let's talk about the umbrella guy in all black clothing that we later find out was a police officer from another state. Let's talk about the other instances where all the real violence, including shootings and windows bashing. Yeah, but wait a minute. I, I'll, I'll let you. I'll let you continue. But let's be honest. When you start talking about the umbrella guy, and I'm quite aware that there have been some white supremacists infiltrating Black Lives Matter movements and committing acts, you know, and making it look like blacks. But let's be honest. Ninety nine point nine percent of this shit that's happening is people that are pro Black Lives Matter. It's not a hell of a lot of white supremacists doing this stuff. It's people who basically favor the movement. So I don't want to get to the point where we sound like. Antifa is the ones who robbed the Capitol building because in reality we know who did, we know who is doing what. So, look, I understand the umbrella guy, but that's you got to admit that's a rarity in these things. But there are people still screaming that oh, a, uh, BLM and Antifa were, were there on January sixth yeah. when we know the exact. Yeah, and they sound just as crazy. Yeah, they and they just they sound just as ridiculous. When we even have 
uh, when we even have a text messages going from, I forget exactly who, to uh, Meadows, uh, uh, Trump's chief of state at the time, saying, that's okay, we'll just tell them BLM and Antifa were there. They were the ones who gave birth to the lie. They are the ones who gave wait, birth wait, to the misinformation to cover their own hands. Repeat, repeat that. I didn't hear. Who said that again? Uh, uh, you know, I have to look it up. There's a text message that literally that went to, I believe it was to Meadows, that actually says text outright. He goes, don't worry, we'll just tell everybody BLM and Antifa were there. Because they were talking and, and freaking out about January 6th. They saw what was going down. They're texting Meadows. They're trying to text Trump directly. And they said, this has got to stop. We saw text messages like that going over and over and over again because they knew what was going to happen. They knew they were going to pay for this in political blood uh, of the worst kind. And they still do, because I'll tell you right now, this country cannot unify until all those involved in January 6th, including Donald Trump, go to jail. We'll never be able to move forward unless that happens. We will well, end up a divided nation. We will end up a divided no. nation with blue states and red states on each side, and that's going to be for the foreseeable future unless a full-blown civil war comes out and we blow ourselves all the kingdom of hell. Shit. All right. Fair enough, Nightmare. I mean, I will tell you before we move on, regardless if we believe Trump had Trump is responsible for January the 6th or not, at the end of the day, I do not believe there is any chance that man is going to go to jail for that. Nightmare? There's got to be some punishment, brother, but there's got to be some punishment. You know, it can't be a slap on the wrist at the very best. Listen, I don't think he'll go to jail either because this goddamn country is so goddamn corrupt in the government. But I'm hoping maybe at best we can give him a lifetime house arrest. No, no That's contact to the outside world. No Internet, no phone, no pager, <laughs> not even smoke that might signals. Be worse. That might be worse if you turn Mar-a-Lago into solitary confinement. I got to move it on. Appreciate you coming through, though, man. Uh, look at the comments. It, as I told the last caller, um, I honestly do not believe President Trump will pay any price for what happened on January 6th. At most, the price he will pay is not ever being reelected again. Outside of that, I do not see President Trump paying any price for January 6th at all. As one of my guests on the program said, which in my viewpoint was eerily frightening, but he made a good point. I cannot remember the guess, but the guess stated there will there is going to be MAGA on every jury. In other words, there's no way in hell you could ever convict Trump because there's going to likely be a Trump sympathizer on any jury you come up with. I actually believe there's a lot of validity to that. I think the chances of that are very, very high. Either having somebody on a jury that is a dedicated Trump sympathizer or a Republican that really hates liberals enough that they'll ride with Trump anyway. There's a great chance that if you put 12 people together, one at least one of those individuals falls in that category. That was a really strong statement. I didn't like it. I don't want to feel it. I don't want to think that there's a possibility of that, but I certainly believe that there is a, a lot of validity to it. Going back to the box, <laughs> who said that Trump is trash, says <laughs> Sammy M., uh, Hey, he was our president. He might be again. You never know. I already threw my full support behind Gavin 2024. Well, he has to announce he's going to run. Gay Eddie. Gay Eddie? He has to announce he's going to run first. Classified documents found at Mike Pence's house to the hooray of Trump and his supporters. As I said earlier in the broadcast, now that it is clear that other prominent politicians have classified documents in their possession that they're not supposed to have. Trump is essentially in the clear about this stuff. Maybe up to the point where they got to damn near apologize for the raid on his house. Probably not because he didn't cooperate, but yeah, any hope of Trump facing any form of accountability for those documents at this point, in my opinion, I'm putting odds at about five to one that nothing will happen to Trump in regards to those documents. And I don't believe the locating of classified documents is going to stop at Mike Pence. I really don't. There are other politicians. Shit, for all we know, Bill Clinton and Jimmy Carter might come up with some shit by the time we're done. Going back to the box.
We can't. I can't see you. I don't know if you can hear me or not. Can y'all hear me in the uh, comments? You can hear me, but you can't hear um, him. Right. Um, I'm trying to wait for him to come back. I somewhat agree with him, though. I don't agree with MAGA at all, but uh, I do somewhat agree with... I don't think that Trump will be... Um, I don't think that he's going to receive any uh, any punishment. He may be indicted, but... Right, I okay. I think he's yeah, was, back. Okay, there we go. Can you see me now? Well, yes. We can see you in here. Okay. Now. All right. You can hear me you can hear me as well. Yes. Okay. So you do not believe President Trump will face any accountability for January 6th? Um, absolutely not. Do I believe that yeah. he should? Absolutely. Um, I do. Um, but like you said, man, uh the dedication uh that politics now has to numbers, um, which is kind of what you were getting at. Um, and not morality, not ethics at all, uh, strictly numbers and, and your ability to rally, um, I don't think that he'll, he'll face any punishment. So let me, let me present it to you this way, because even folks on the right, even folks who are dedicated Trump supporters, believe mm -hmm. that they can get most of Trump's policies in terms of running the country from someone like Ron DeSantis. So knowing that even MAGA believes that, why do you personally believe there is so much dedication and love for Trump, even with stuff like January 6th happening, when they can get what they want out of another politician without the baggage, but they keep going back to Trump? Why do you think that that, that dedication, that devotion is there? Um, again, uh, the last statement that I made, uh, ability to rally. Um, due to campaigning um, and the way is if you look at from, like you said, from uh, Clinton um, on up to now Biden, if you look at the drastic change in campaigning um, and the effects that it has to actually us electing a president or electing any um, government officials, uh, it it's, it's comes down to rallying. That's what we've become. I hate it. Um, but that's now, wait a we, minute. Hold on. Hold on. I can't. I don't know if I can agree with that. Biden's rallies suck, and he's the president of the country. So, but, but I don't know. His, how it, I can't. Go ahead. Okay. His ability, his 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 rallies sucked. Meaning his message sucked, kind of. But his ability to understand his demographic did not. That wasn't necessarily Biden. That was his team. That was his uh his campaign team. But at the same time, they knew exactly who to talk to. Black women elected Biden. Let's just be real. That, I don't that's know. What... I, I, you know, and that's that's what they show. In my opinion, though, I don't believe Biden or his team did anything that's so right to talk about. I believe that black women and folks got behind Biden because they hated Trump just that much. I don't believe the enthusiasm for Biden had anything to do with the Biden campaign. It was just that strong of a dislike for Trump, if you ask me. I'll say that, but this is this is where I'll have to say um that can be challenged. Okay. When we see initially the 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 hate from, from Trump, a lot of those people who did vote would not have voted. Okay. Right. They, they had that they had that hate for Trump, but they gave them somebody who 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 would pander to to what they wanted. You see what I'm saying? So then that's well, why. And see, here's why here's why I kind of disagree with that. I believe that the hatred for Trump would have energized folks to vote for whoever the liberals put up. If it had been Gavin Newsom or Cory Booker or Bernie Sanders or any of those folks, I believe that you still were going to energize a lot of youthful voters because Trump was taking pleasure in pissing off people. And they were going to come out and vote for whoever. But like you mentioned, black women in, I believe it was North uh, Carolina or whatever, they did get behind yeah, I mean, Biden and <laughs> propel them. Right. That's I'm I'm actually in North Carolina. I'm in I'm in Charlotte. Um no. so that's why I'm speaking about it firsthand. You see what I'm saying? So okay. if you yeah. look at the numbers, right, of the voters before versus the voters after Biden, there were a lot of people who you we, you and me know typically would not have voted at all. Even with with, yep. with, with the hate for Trump would have just not voted. But yeah. but like I said, the presence of Biden 
and him being able to say things that was agreeable to them is what made them chose Biden. If it had been somebody else and they had some totally uh, different campaign um, goal, I don't. I think those same uh, voters would not have voted at all. They'd have won about their their day. Fair enough, and but, I will. I, I will also, follow that up. I'll follow that up by saying, when you're saying things like Black Lives Matter is a terrorist group and waving the Confederate flag around, it's not hard for the other guy to get black support. I mean, it's just you kind of make true, it true, real, true. Make, Yeah, you kind of made it true. easy. But yeah, that's I, what I will say. Yeah. I agree with what you're saying. I will say this though, like like you said, Trump did make it very dangerously easy for a Biden campaign to work, right? But they did have a have to have an element of agree of agreeability. Is all I will say. <laughs> yeah, so that, only thing, you, only easy. thing, yeah, only thing you need in terms of agreeability to get the black vote when you're going against Trump is to stand up and say, "I ain't him." That's all you really need. I'm not that dude. That's enough to get a lot of black people because they dislike him just that yeah, much. I don't need to. I don't even need to know what you're selling. This dude is giving us a fentanyl overdose. I'm willing to eat whatever you feed me because this dude is giving me fentanyl right. overdose. That's how a lot of blacks view Trump. I agree. I totally agree that. Like I said, I think that. Uh, like I said, due to the fact that rallying is such uh, the major component. Um, in in politics these days, it wasn't hard for for Biden's campaign um, uh, right. to to stand that. You know what I mean? That was that's a, if you do your job effectively at all, that's something you're going to understand. All we got to do is denounce Trump, and we we basically in. You know what I mean? Right. So so before I move it on, and let you go. What do you think of the LA? Because the topic we're actually discussing the LAPD police chief right. banning his own officers from flying the thin blue line flag, suggesting what we're talking about, that it has been hijacked by white supremacists, racists, and bigots. Do you see any... Is, do you think that was the right move for a police chief to make? Okay. I'm going to... I'm going to tie in what I just said to this, and then this is going to be a little bit of a different take than the um the previous uh guest. Okay. I believe that he made that choice and it was a correct choice. I do not believe it came from a genuine place. As to say, I believe that also had a lot to do with rallying. I think that had a lot to do with image um, and, and, and the perceived notion that, listen, these people, my, my, the people who are watching me disagree with this flag. So because of that, I have to also disagree with this flag. And that's just, I think, what, uh, what it came down to. Because like you said before, this has been going on um, since 2014. You see what I'm saying? It's 2020. Yeah. For now you to wake up and say, hey, man, I think this is wrong. Is is a It's a bit disingenuous. You knew, you've always known it's been um, wrong. And I believe from the beginning, I don't... I, I don't really believe in the terminology being hijacked. I think it's really kind of been that same uh, perpetuation from the beginning. I feel like it just got louder, but it didn't get hijacked. It just got, it, it got my, you, you know what I mean? It, it just got pushed to the forefront. And so now it's become something you can't ignore. So now you have to take a stance one way or the other. So now, because of the way politics work, my stance has to be something that is going to be socially accepted. Well, and that it is. I appreciate you coming through, though, uh, Bam. Come on back through anytime, man. All right. Good talk. Uh, and looking in the comments, in regards to what my last caller was suggesting, he stated he does not believe what the L.A. police chief did is coming from a position of being genuine, as if he, you know, he, for the most part, catered to cancel culture of sorts or the liberals in his area of sorts or something like that was it a genuine move if you ask your humble correspondent my answer would be i don't give a damn it, there is no denying if you look at history that abraham lincoln did not free the slaves under a position of authenticity he wasn't doing it because he loved blacks he was doing it because he thought it would put a it would put the yankees in a better position than to win the war as long as you free me, I don't give a damn why you're doing it. I'm just going to put it that way. I don't care if what you're doing is genuine or not. If it is in my best interest, I'm fine with you doing that. If you are pandering to me, because some folks suggested that President Biden on Martin Luther King Day, you know, showing up to monuments and showing up to gatherings in honor of MLK was pandering to African Americans. If you show me support, I don't give a damn what your reasons are. 
You are always going to be better showing me support than a person who is not. Period. Doesn't matter if it's pandering or not. Going back to the box. Piano man, I think that says. Let me move it on. Okay. You folks holding TikTok has been a bit flaky today, uh, but let's make it happen. Do you know how the USA became a great country in the first place? Uh, KVS Perro. Depending on your definition of great, you think the Native Americans see America as a great country? I don't know. Depending on your definition of what you refer to as great, feel free to come in the box and we'll chat it up. Uh, Piano Man, good afternoon. Handsome, my man. How are you doing? I'm in the trenches as usual. Of LA police chief. LA uh, police chief banning the thin blue line flag. What's your take? Well, it's it's difficult, but I want to I want to do something else if you don't mind, and then I'll drop. Let's do it. Okay. okay, let me hear it. If you and I were to meet 10, 15, 20 times, and you don't know who I am, and you do a eulogy of me, and you don't know who my people are, would you? be considered uh or i be considered uh not important to you i don't know if i understand what you're saying i've met you 20 times no hold on but I... Don donald trump did a eulogy for diamond oh that was bad <laughs> and donald trump yeah that, that was awful and had met them multiple 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 i'm gonna say multiple like a million times so does he not consider them, one, as human beings and important enough to know who they are, seeing how he's had them in the White House multiple times, up on stage multiple times? And then Donald Trump says, I didn't know who Silk was until just now. Yeah. So it, it he... appears as if, because I've said this before for folks who talk about Trump being intolerant and Trump being racist. At the end of the day, I don't know what's in the man's heart, but I he do believe... Used... He used their popularity with the black community and he didn't show them the respect as even understanding who they were or concerned himself to know who they are as one human beings alone. Didn't know that they were together. And that's, mean, this that's, is, the, this point I'm, that's the point this I'm is, trying to make. Yeah, that's the point dementia. I'm trying to make is that at the end of the day, Trump will take your support no matter what you represent. And when it came to Diamond and Silk, for the most part, they were showing him love. They were showing him support. And that's all he was there for. As far as getting to know them as actual human beings, as you stated, I've seen you 15, 20 times. I don't even know who the hell you are. But you showed me love. You showed me support. So therefore, I'm down with you. And I believe that represents the relationship they had. He used them as pawns for the black community to get the black votes, showing but them they love. Used but... Him too. but wait a minute, they used him too. Diamond and Silk made money, got their 15 minutes of fame. They were using him. These these African Americans these African Americans that identify yeah. as conservative, the outspoken ones, the Larry Elders, the Candace Owens, the Hodge twins, Diamond and Silk, they're doing this to make money. So they're using the no, right no, side of the aisle as well. No, they are. Yeah. The thing is, they, but the thing is, for the president of the United States, it looks not bad. to know, yeah. not to know who they are as human beings alone, and saying, "I just met her for the first time today." <laughs> that is the most disgusting. I saw that. Yeah, I don't have an answer for that. But he also said he didn't know who Stormy Daniels was. He only knew uh, Michael Cohen for a short period of time. Nick Fuentes never yeah, heard of him. What is, is the other? Is a, what was the other white new, supremacists? The other white a, supremacists. This is that, a woman. This is a woman. Yeah. G. He showed them no respect. He literally just pissed on them. I'm sorry, but anyway. <laughs> It's horrible what's going on with these mass shootings. I just wanted to say that. Brother, I love you. You have the best show on earth. And people, quit knocking people down just because you don't like what they have to say. But I'm out of here. I'll come back when I have more important things to say. I love your show. <laughs> Stick with it. 
And uh, by the way, um, you need to shine your head a little bit more, man. It's getting kind of hazy there. <laughs> Catch you later. All right, bro. Have a good day. I'm out. All right. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, it, I don't know what the hell just happened there. Uh, we'll go back to this real quick. Um, it's the Kool-Aid. <laughs> you know something, but it did. Listen, what the last caller stated in regards to what was done at the memorial service for, for Diamond... There's no denying that looked horrible. Look, everyone on the right and even some folks on the left suggest that President Biden has dementia, doesn't know where the hell he's at, cannot talk, cannot string together two sentences without reading them from a teleprompter. If Biden had got up there and eulogized somebody in that manner, someone that he's been on television and it rallies around for a host of times, let's just be honest, my beloved MAGA, you would be saying this dude is a fucking idiot. This shows that he has mental illness. Here is a man in mental decline. He's, he's 80 years old, damn near. He's met with these people several times. And here Biden is having the nerve to be at their funeral or their memorial service saying he don't know who they are. That is exactly what folks on the right would be saying if Biden did something that ridiculous. So if you want to be fair, if you want to call a strike, a strike no matter who the hell is at bat, you got to be fair. What Trump did at that memorial service was horrendous. There's no way to spin that around when you got videos and rallies and shit where these two brats are on stage next to the guy, hugging him and taking pictures and every damn thing. You wait till the woman is dead and say, I don't know who the hell. I'm going back to the box. I'm going back to the box. Uh, it is. Anthony, oh, yeah, my name is Kidden was up there. Then we'll go to Anthony. It's Kidden. <laughs> Trump don't give an F about anyone but himself. Oh, ouch. They never acknowledge his endless nonsense. Well, this is certainly a case of that. That's what happens at the Trump circus. You guys are harsh on Trump today. Uh, my name is Ken. Good afternoon. What's going on, handsome liberal? How are you, man? I'm doing good. Good to have you back on, man. First, we're talking about the police chief out in Los Angeles prohibiting his own police force from displaying the thin blue line flag. Do you... Do you believe that's a good move to make for the police chief himself? I don't think the police are there to advocate for themselves. You know what I mean? They are there to protect and serve the people. Uh, I don't know why we're debating on uh, police being able to advertise for themselves. That That's not what they're there for, you know. So. Okay. So what about his claim that the, the thin blue line flag has been hijacked by bigots and white supremacists and hate groups? Do you see that? Uh, I mean, yeah, I mean, people, yeah, they do. They, I mean, they use that symbol to pretend like they like the police, right? But say they're standing in their way at, like, say, the state capitol, right? They'll beat them up, you know, and, and push them out of the way. And then they don't like the police so much, you know? It just depends on the situation and what day it is, whether they like the police or not. Yeah, there are rumors that they were, they, they actually were beating some cops with the blue line. I, I didn't see it, but I've heard rumors of folks suggesting that on January 6th, they actually were beating the Capitol Police with thin blue line flags. I hope that's just a rumor and not true, but I did hear folks say that. Um, so what you're saying is just all a ruse. It's all pretend, it's smoke and mirrors, uh, suggesting that they actually care about the police, but when it's their own matters, they don't. So if it's a ruse, if they really do not genuinely care about police, then why are they flying the flag to begin with? Well, you know, it's better to appeal to the authorities and maybe have some of them side with you than to outright uh, be against. like, you know, I mean, the police are more favorable towards the right wing than towards liberals. Right. Because we say things like defund the police and the right wing pretends that they love the police. Right. So, you know, they're more inclined to be more favorable to people who pretend to. But does, like that still, does that still apply in modern times? With you know, Trump is constantly criticizing the FBI. And obviously yeah. there's no love for the Capitol Police after January 6th either. So does that still apply? Well, I mean, you know, regular citizens aren't uh, most regular citizens are not dealing with the FBI on a regular basis. You know what I mean? True. We're talking about local police, you know, so. I want to kind of stick with that because that's who most people are interfacing with on a day to day basis. You know, if you're interfacing with the FBI, you got some other shit going on altogether. So, yeah, no kidding. So, but do you see the thin blue line flag as being racist in any way? I mean, you can turn anything into a racist mechanism that you want to. 
I think the real issue here is the police brutality, uh, specifically against the African-American community. Uh, and I think that white supremacists support that. So, of course, they're going to uh, wave the, th the blue line flag because, you know, I'm sure they're very in favor of police brutality against African-American people. Wow. Uh, man, that's 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 awful. So how do you respond to folks that suggest by banning the thin blue line flag it's actually showing that you do not support law enforcement? Uh, I mean, you're, you're not here to, you know, I, it's not my job to support law enforcement. It's their job to support me. They're here to protect and serve me. Uh, I am not here to support law enforcement. They get my tax dollars, and that's my way of showing my support. You get paid from my tax dollars, and that's how I support you, you know. So, <laughs> well, wait yeah. a minute. <laughs> yeah, but the military also gets your tax dollars. Is that is that your same stance with the military that I don't support yeah, I mean, you? You get my money. I, to I, hell up. I am ex-military, and I'll tell you right now. It's not your job to worship the military or to over get overly extravagant in your support of military. OK, generally, you want there to be peace. Right. You you don't want the military being active all the time. Right. You don't want to be right. go military, go blow these people up, go unalive these people. Right. Generally, you want there to be peace. Right. So, you know, right. I would say you can support the military by being against frivolous wars. Uh, and by paying your taxes and making sure that those guys get a fair salary. Can't argue with that. Can't argue with that. All right. Appreciate you coming through, Ken. I yeah, see no, no problem, man. See no issues with that. Come on back through anytime as usual. Have a good one. You too. All right. That's what we're talking about. For you folks in the comments, whether you are on the right or on the left, and make no mistake about it, I say it in every broadcast, this is a MAGA-friendly program. For you folks who enjoy this type of civilized dialogue from both sides of the aisle, feel free to follow the program. This is what we generally do, 11.30 a.m. Central Time. There is no banning, blocking, or censorship fears on this program, with the exception of the TikTok gods. I have no control over that shit, but yours truly, whether you agree or disagree with the host, never means a damn thing. So if this is what you enjoy, feel free to follow the program, help your boy out, help out the algorithms. By the way, let your thumbs not be lazy. Tap the screen, get your boy up to 15,000 likes. I think that is well within range. 500 plus people looking in the comments oh no good lord you confused says uh i think it says giorgio i cannot pronounce that but confused about what come in the box talk to your boy let me know what i'm confused about maybe like 3 15 on an analog clock you could perhaps straighten me out uh double tap the screen guys i appreciate that i like the host despite not liking his politics good dude buffalo blizzard Always welcome on the program. I appreciate the commentary. Thank you. Uh, are you freaking serious? MAGA and black. I get a lot of new viewers. I try not to continue the same spiel over and over again. But as you see, the name of the program kind of speaks for my political leanings. However, I am a huge fan of just talking to MAGA. I believe MAGA does not get a fair play. Conservatives, Republicans do not get a fair play in the mainstream media. Purpose of the hat is to let them know they are always welcome here without any fear of being banned, censored, or blocked. That explains that. Going back to the box. It is Anthony 619. Not a lot of MAGA today. It's this topic on the thin blue line must be running away. Good afternoon, Anthony. Welcome back. What do, boss man? How you doing today? Doing good. What do you think? Banning the thin blue line flag. You think that's a good call by a police chief? Yes, I do. How spy elaborate? Because um, if you you don't have a first of all, um, there's no such thing as blue lives. First and foremost, um, it's a job. They filled out an application. They chose to be police officers. And I don't think that it's a good thing to um, celebrate mediocrity, first and foremost. You know, you. What do you mean? When you say, what do you mean when you say? Wait, elaborate. What do you mean by celebrate mediocrity? 
from coast to coast, um, there's no other job in, in America, probably in the world, where you can perform at a 12% uh, success rate and, and and be applauded for, for a good job. You know, I'm, I'm not, I'm not, wait, wait, 20% success rate at what? Major crimes. From coast to coast, from east coast to west coast, there is only a 12 to 15% success rate of major crimes in all police departments. Yeah, but can't so, you isn't but isn't some of that isn't some of that or can't some of that be blamed on the fact that for a cop to do beat work on the street and solve major crimes, if the community is going against helping him, it, doesn't that sometimes make his job impossible when witnesses won't cooperate? Nobody, you know, folks, you got a hundred folks watching the crime being committed, and when you start interviewing folks, everybody is turning their back and saying, "I ain't seen shit." Can you fault the cop for not being able to solve that? I'm not here to tell you how to recreate the police department. That's not what I'm. That's not what I'm here to do. I'm just here to okay. say that I know for a fact that from coast to coast. Police departments in every city, just about in every state, have a um, major crime success rate of 12 to 15 percent, whether that's with the community's help or not. So I don't think that there's nothing uh, celebratory about that. Is there any possibility that the current environment, whether it's defund the police or holding them you know, heavily accountable, has anything to do with that low success rate? I think that the the people that they choose to uh, police on the regular um, have a history and a relationship with the police, which goes both ways. The same way people don't tell what's going on in the hood, police officers don't tell what's going on in police police stations. That's true. That is, there is a yeah. There's I think there's a uh, uh, no snitching clause in the hood. There is a what they call it a blue wall of silence. So yeah, that that does appear in police departments. I can't argue with that. So you know, um, and it's it's a right now we're living in a in in a day and time where uh, most of these flags and relics um, have been um, bastardized by one group or the other, mostly one group. And when you see them, you see them and you see them in tangents. You know, you don't see them. Most of the time, you don't see them alone. You know, you you may see a, a house nowadays that have a, a an American flag in it. You know, that's, that's patriotic. But then you see so many houses that have the American flag, the thin blue line flag, the Confederate flag. So when you see all those flags combined in, 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 in areas, so frequently, it's hard to distinguish the two. I mean, the two between between them. You know. So, but let me ask you this: in regards to what the let me ask you this: in regards to what the police chief said, do you see the thin blue line flag as a symbol of racism or hatred or bigotry? Yes, I do. Because, like I said, if you notice where those flags are located, usually, usually they're located either with a Confederate flag or a Donald Trump flag. Yeah, yeah. So I don't. You know, I asked the caller earlier in the broadcast because there are folks who suggest that the only purpose of the thin blue line flag is to thumb their nose up at Black Lives Matter. And I got to ask you, you know, being a child of the seventies and eighties myself, I don't remember seeing a thin blue line flag before the Black no. Lives Matter movement. Have you? No. Do you remember seeing that as a kid? Not at all. Not, not at all. And what I also didn't see as a kid is a militarized police. You know, I, I remember police looking like police officers. Now police yeah. police officers look like full fledged uh, military people. So when 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 you grow up in an area where you see um, the military all day long, you know, anytime police officer get out of his car, he's wait, 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 hold on. I gotta defend. Even though, you know, I understand where you're coming from. I got to kind of defend the militarized police from this standpoint. When I was a kid living on the south side of Chicago, mind you, in the 70s and 80s, folks, th people didn't have 100 round drums and stuff like that. They didn't have military style weapons, you know, and bullets that could go through body armor and shit like that. The criminals have stepped their game up significantly in the last generation or so. So 
I don't know if what the police were working with in the 1970s and 80s, because they had revolvers back then. I don't know if they could compete if they continued acting, you know, dressing and operating in that manner. I I I respect that that point of view, but like say like um prime example, I stay you know I stay in North Carolina, a small um uh, town in North Carolina. Um, you you see the police officers at football games with full military uh a, a gara on with yeah. with the with the long guns and what what makes you approachable looking like you're ready for war? Yeah, you I know, agree I don't, with that. Yeah. So you know um I think that. Um, the police departments in our country have chosen a side. And I think uh, yeah. the side has chosen the police officers. And yeah. with that being said, with that being said, um, how can you not see that flag as a sign of, uh, it's almost like a declaration of war. Ooh, that's pretty harsh. You I mean, see the it, big it, blue line flag as a declaration of war? War on yes, who? Sir. If if you pull me over, if you pull me over and you're one of those police officers that has that flag in your window, um, I was already intimidated. I'm even so more so intimidated now because I know that you stand behind that, that thin blue line. I know that anything that you do to me, if it's not caught on camera or caught by somebody else, um, I know that you're going to stand behind that thin blue line. I know that you're going to stand behind that code of silence. You really stated that pretty well. I got to move it on, Anthony. I see what your your point is well made. Appreciate you coming in, man. Come on back to any time. Appreciate you time. every time. Always a pleasure. All right. Damn, he's, he really answered the hell out of that question. You know, I try to bring my A game. I try to come correct. I try to state things as eloquently as possible. But nevertheless, I never make no qualms about the fact that I don't have all the answers and I sure as hell am not a know-it-all. And I always concede when a guest says some shit, like what he just stated, that is worth giving accolades to. He really, really did a good job with that. All right, looking in the comments. A thin blue line has been hijacked by MAGA. Um, MAGA came along in 2015. Was the thin blue the thin blue line flag was around before that, wasn't it? Or did it really become prominent? I, I mean, I know that before Black Lives Matter, there really was no thin blue line flag. So I can't necessarily say it was not hijacked by MAGA. Because it is very prominent at MAGA gatherings, no denying. But what was it? Was it around before that? I don't know. Let me go into the box. You guys are coming hard today. The right libertarian guy let's make it happen welcome back to the program libertarian guy Talk thin blue line flag the thin blue line flag being banned by an actual police chief you think that's a good move uh no i don't i Why don't not? think i don't think it's a good move uh because honestly it's showing that there's a clear bias within that police station, and uh, I would say that it's showing that the uh, leadership within that police station is weak uh, because they're willing to – I mean, we all know why it happened. Uh, they're taking the knee to the mob, and uh, I consider that weakness no matter what side you're on. Uh, if, well, you know, let's, you're let's BLM your, and, let's address your statement about the flag – being banned is taking a knee to the mob, and I get your reference. How would you refer to someone saying that by flying a flag is throwing a finger up at the mob? Um, it can be, but it's also, uh, from what I understand of the thin blue line, is uh, it's supporting the men and women that actually, you know, go out and put their right. Uh, lives on the line. It's not necessarily, you know, celebrating, you know, the POS police. It's, you know, for the people that are, you know, actually, on, you know, feet to the ground, you know, their lives are in danger every day. Uh, so, 
How do you respond? Because this is coming from the actual police chief himself, paraphrasing the man. He basically stated that the flag has come to symbolize far right wing extremism, white supremacy, and a thumbs up against Blue Lives Matter. That came from the chief. Do you see any movement at all in terms of suggesting that the Blue Lives the, 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 the what is it, the thin blue line flag has been hijacked by bigots and white supremacists? Do you see any validity to that at all? Not necessarily. Uh, I think it's conjecture. Uh, do do some white supremacists use a thin blue line? Sure. But, why? Uh, why? Why? Why would a white supremacist be using a thin? What? What does that have to do with their movement at all? Uh, just because they uh, they they'll probably use it because they believe that it's going against BLM. And I would say the reason why it didn't show up until after BLM is because, uh, you know, for the past few decades, you know, cops weren't getting firebombed while sitting in their cruiser. Uh, you know, cops weren't getting, you know, pew pewed and unalive by protesters. Um, I think. Um, why, did, why, why do you believe? Because you're talking about the anti sentiment towards police and up to the point where some of them are being attacked and assaulted and even losing their lives. Why do you believe that that just popped up out of nowhere? When I was a child in the 70s and 80s, what you're just stating, that stuff was not regularly happening, but now it's happening. What do you think changed from then to now to make that stuff a reality? Uh, I think there's, you know, some select instances where, you know, uh, POS cops were, you know, doing these things. Uh, but I believe the media and social media exasperated and uh, basically riled up a bunch of people. And, uh, you know, when you get riled up, you tend to, you know, resort to anger. And it just exasperated from that. Um, well, I will... go, go ahead. ahead. No, oh, I was yeah. going to say, I was going to say in regards to your your claim that POS cops are what's causing it. Some folks will suggest the media. I think one thing that we're not probably discussing is that we've had POS cops in police departments since the beginning of police. The difference, I believe, is, in my opinion, and you can tell me where I'm maybe getting it wrong, I believe that for once we started holding the the police accountable for getting rid of POS cops when before they were de defending them and covering up their antics, which is what I believe caused the firestorm in the beginning is that you guys know some of these dudes suck. They're hurting people and you are covering up for them, allowing them to leave and switch departments and play musical chairs. Very similar to the Catholic Church, where you know you got bad people within your ranks and instead of holding them accountable, you're actually protecting them. That's what I believe took place. No, I actually agree with you on that. I'm against the thin blue line, and I'm actually I may take it even farther than you know some liberals. I'm I think we should abolish the just like I believe we should abolish the teachers unions. I think we should abolish the uh, police union completely, which you know empowers these bad cops and you know handcuffs the good cops that want to do something but they're not able to because it's not just them losing their jobs because then the bad cops will actually physically come after them. Yeah. And that's very similar to what my other caller was suggesting. It happens in, you know, happen in urban areas where the citizens do not help the police because snitching can be dangerous. That also applies in, in police departments that if you snitch, because they have a, a blue wall of silence of sorts. If you snitch, you can get in trouble. So how do you feel when someone suggests, like what my last caller did, and, and a lot of folks in the comments agreed, that wearing that blue, thin blue line flag, which some cops do on their uniforms, there are even folks on TikTok, you see them doing videos sitting in a police car, and that flag is prominent. How do you view someone saying that by officers wearing that, it is essentially like declaring war on the citizens from a distance? Uh, us against them platform. Do you see any reason why a person would view cops as taking on a stance of us against them? No, I don't think you should see that as a declaration of war against you unless you uh, mean ill will towards police officers in general. 
Um, so you have to want war for something like that to symbolize war for you. And I do want to touch yeah, on something. That... Yeah, but if a cop does something wrong and other cops protect him, what did George Bush say? You either with the terrorists or you're not. If you, if a cop does something wrong to you and his sergeant or his buddies cover it up, isn't that indeed them taking them declaring that they're on this side of the fence? If this is happening, like not that it doesn't happen. That's not what I meant by it. But like, okay. if this is All a right. situation, you know, if you're uh, being approached by a police officer who has a thin blue line flag, if this is taking place. In this instance, then yes, they are declaring war on you, but the flag patch isn't. And I want to push back on something the previous uh, speaker was uh, speaking on the fact sure. that, you know, because some people, uh, you know, fly that along with the American flag and the uh, rebel or Confederate flag um, means that they're all the same. Wait, repeat that, that again. Uh, Porn previous, star. Say yeah, that the, again. I didn't hear you one more time. The previous uh, gentleman was saying that because, you know, some people fly, you know, all three of the flags together that uh, they're symbolized as the same thing. I think the only way you can come to that conclusion is if you're an absolute imbecile because each one <laughs> of them have a different meaning. So, well, let um, me ask you that. that that's, a, that's an interesting point. I want to ask, I asked a call to this earlier in the broadcast. When you look at Colin Kaepernick taking the knee or any high school student taking the knee, there is a lot of outrage, particularly from my patriots, from my right wingers. You know, you're, you're just, you know, you're desecrating the flag. You're, you're being dishonorable. So I have to ask you this. When you see hate groups, which we all know there are some white supremacist groups that you even admitted that fly the thin blue line flag. Why is there no outrage from police officers who suggest that this flag is only showing the support of police? Why are they not outraged that some hate groups are indeed adopting, adopting their flag? I mean, there are no shortage of folks that drive down the street with both the thin blue line flag and the Confederate flag flying together. Why are there no cops really protesting against this? There should be, uh, and I don't know the inner workings of each, you know, specific department. Uh, there may be different things and policies in place preventing them from doing that, um, and it could just be weak men. Um, I believe if, you know, this is going against what you're uh, intending, you should stand up against it. Absolutely. I agree with that 100%. But what about uh, the notion, what about the possibility that the cops are not speaking out against it because they they agree with it? Is that any possibility that that could be the case? Yeah, but then you'd have to be speaking in an absolute. Well, you can't speak in an absolute, just like I can't say all right-wingers hate Colin Kaepernick for taking a knee, but there's no denying that a large portion of them do. I cannot say that all police are in favor of cops, or better yet, thin blue line folks, white supremacists flying the Confederate flag and the police flag together, but we got to admit there's not a lot of outcry against us. So, no, we're not speaking in absolutes. But in terms of the amount of backlash you hear from police when someone is waving the thin blue line flag right alongside the Confederate flag, it's, it's virtually non-existent. You don't hear the police saying anything about that. Yes, and I believe they need to speak up about that. And like I said, there could be policies in place preventing them to. And uh, like I said, I think that comes down to like these uh, – organizations like the police union, you know, ideals like the thin blue line uh, to not go against your, you know, quote unquote, brother in arm. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I don't, I, I can't possibly, when I, when I watch shows like Fox news and things like that, I see cops on there speaking out against people taking the knee and all. I can't possibly see departments saying that you cannot complain if somebody is flying the thin blue lag flying flag next to the Confederate flag. I don't believe there's any policy in place for stopping an off duty officer from complaining about that. They're just choosing not to complain yeah. about it. Like I said, I don't know. It could be, you know, a, policy or an agreement or just weak men uh i'm of the ilk that if you see something you know that's misrepresenting you 
and your brothers, you need to stand up for it because those that don't die on their feet, you know, live on their knees. And I had an issue with the Colin Kaepernick thing. Uh, not necessarily for what most people that, you know, are more conservative or lean right on. Um, I did it because I, when it comes to my sports, I don't like politics in it. You know what I mean? Uh, like if I'm watching, you know, I like skateboarding. If I'm watching a skate competition, I don't want a political speech. I just want to see some skateboarding. Uh, that's why I had an issue with it. And even before that, yeah, I had so an issue how with would Colin you read, okay, he was a bad player. Yeah, before I let you go, let's let's take what you just said. I, when I come to see a game, I came to see the game. I didn't come to hear politics. What if someone said the same thing about it? Listen, I'm coming to watch a football game. I don't want to see B1s flying over here. I don't want to hear about some sergeant that lost his leg at war. I came to see a game. Would they not have the same point that you're having? Yeah, I don't want to hear that shit either. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm trying to watch a football game. The skateboard competition or the X Games, I'm, I want to see that shit. I don't want to hear none of that. Like, I, okay. I, I keep it consistent on both sides. Like, I we hear politics all day, whether it's on the news, if we're scrolling through Facebook, if we're scrolling through TikTok, uh, at the water cooler. You know, we hear that shit all day. And, you know, sports events and, like, TV shows and movies, that's our escape. And I, right. I don't think Fair any of that shit on either side should be in those forms of entertainment because we're trying to escape all that shit. We hear it constantly all day on repeat. Fair point. That's very libertarian of you. I got to move it on. You know what we do here. Yeah, thanks for having me on, man. Always a pleasure. And that is the point uh, that I was trying to make with the last guest is that we do not want to come across as being biased and i'm talking about from the right or the left for instance if taking a knee is somehow disrespecting the flag if you look at the actual flag code and i meant to do my homework before i came on but i kind of came on impromptu but there is an actual um there is an actual write-up in terms of it's not in, in not in the constitution but there's an actual flag code and it talks about you can't discolor the flag you can't do different things to the flag just like you're supposed to take you know you're supposed to stand and salute the flag and things like that so there are there is etiquette in regards to old glory because when the lgbt crowd started putting the entire rainbow in regards to the stripes on the U.S. flag, there was a lot of folks on the right that were saying that they were doing, they were going against the proper etiquette of the flag. Well, being honest, painting a blue stripe through the flag is also a violation. They state what that flag is supposed to be. The actual colors, red, white, all 13 of those stripes are supposed to be alternating red and white. The stars are supposed to be white. There's only supposed to be 50 of them. And the background amongst the stars is supposed to be blue. So any authorization, the, the fire department has a red line through it. The police has a blue line through it. You got folks putting the don't tread on me snake on top of it. And to go and really add insult to injury, a lot of folks in the South are actually stitching a Confederate flag half and half with the United States flag. I'm just simply saying to be biased, to be unbiased, call a, you know, call a strike a strike no matter who's at bat. If you do not want someone disrespecting the flag, you should stand up to all folks who are doing things that go against the U.S. flag code, not folks that you agree with or causes that you are down for. Putting the don't tread on me snake on the middle of the flag is desecrating the flag just as well as an LGBT person making a rainbow out of it. So you can't pick and choose when it's okay to you know, to desecrate the flag. It all counts. All right, looking in the comments. Mechanic, or no, it was Dominica, I think it was. Let's get up. I don't know. TikTok is acting all kinds of flaky. Amen, I appreciate it. Did you hear they found documents in Pence's home as well? Yes, I did hear about the documents found in Pence's home, and I do believe that pretty much puts Trump in the clip. I don't think Trump has anything to do. Dominica, good afternoon. Hi there. How you doing? I'm doing good. I appreciate you holding. We're talking about the flag being banned by the police chief in L.A. Did you see that as the right thing to make? Yes, I did. Huh? 
What do you I think? A, is, what do you think is wrong with the flag? Why shouldn't the police officer be allowed to display that? Okay, can I? De- I gotta define some things. Police sure. and military have to wear identification while wearing their uniforms. Yeah. The fed, the feds, the ATF, the DC cops, they all wear the American flag because they work under the U.S. Constitution. A state police officer like me works under, I, I'm in Ohio. My flag would be Ohio. Okay. I work under the Constitution of the state of Ohio. My jurisdiction is in Ohio. I do not work for the federal government. Do you, so not my have identification, a, do, you not have an, do you not have an American flag anywhere in your uniform? No. Oh. No. Okay. We we wore we wore put patches to identify our jurisdiction where our arrest powers are at. We cannot step outside a city and arrest somebody if we do not ha- work in that city. Yeah, it is an identification. Yeah, but a lot of police officers do have the American flag on their outfits too, don't they? No. The uniform spe- in the pl- policies and procedures manual make sure that both sides reflect the jurisdiction of their powers. Yeah, I did not know that. I did not know. I- I've seen, I've been through your state and I've seen uh, the patch of Ohio on, on your, um, on your outfits there. So, but. Well, I actually see- design, I actually designed my own police department's patch. Oh, Really? Yeah. Good on you. So, do you see a reason for actual citizens to have an adverse view of the thin blue line patch or flag? Yes. Yes, they do because they know the thin blue line is bad cops going against good cops, telling them to keep quiet. I fought the blue line. I won. How did other, I mean, considering that you're saying you're law enforcement, when you fought the blue line, how did your other brothers in arms treat you? I was the first female officer. They said to my face the first day I was on the job, we'll make sure the bitch doesn't make it a year. Did you report that? (laughs) All I could do was was get a lawyer, retain the evidence, and go after them in civil court. I got to ask. I mean, I don't want to get too personal. Is there any articles, anything dedicated to you out there? Oh, yeah. There's a lot of articles. (laughs) I'd be curious. I I I, I actually had three book publishers that wanted my story, but... I didn't want to be a public figure. I had PTSD from everything I, what I went through, and I stayed quiet, didn't write my book. Okay. Didn't write I'm my story. I'm just curious because I have had, and I'm no disrespect to you, but I'm just curious because I've had, I have had people come on the program and claim things that were not true, but I don't have any reason oh, no. not to believe I can, you. But that's why I, asked I can, you. yeah, I can give you the police chief thing, the stu- my sit, my city police chief that I live in now. He knows I went to the academy, same academy as, he, academy as him. The wow. sheriff. What? The well, sheriff will identify me. I got to echo the, the sentiments of Lizzie in the comments. You're a true badass. I mean, I'm glad to hear that. It, so you still you still are a sworn officer at this point, right? No, I was hurt in the line of duty five years before I was set to become the first female chief. A drunk driver slammed into my cruiser and broke my neck. Oh, oh man. Wow. You do you are, are I mean, you obviously got some lasting effects, but I mean, you can still operate all your limbs and stuff. Yeah, I just can't get hit again because there's a tear right next to my spinal cord. If I get hit again, I will become a quadriplegic. Damn. Oh, okay. Did they take care of you? Did they, has the department make sure you're okay? No, I actually here? had to. No, I actually had to file suit against the police department. <laughs> oh my god. All right. Wow. Wow. This has definitely been an enlightening conversation. But, it didn't go in the direction I thought, but I'm, I mean, I'm glad to hear but you're to okay. Get back, and... But to get back to the blue line flag, the blue line flag just existed in 2010, 12. And most of the blue line groups that I know of in my area are pretty much corrupt cops. I know who they are. So 
<laughs> Do you remember the incident about a Weirton, West Virginia cop? He was talking to a su suicidal black man who was holding his gun. He knew he, there was no harm going on. He was a former Marine, and he was trying to talk the guy down, and his other partner came in and immediately shot the black man? No, I didn't hear about that. Okay, well, the police department fired the Marine. So the Marine file, filed a lawsuit against Wirtin PD. The blue line flags supported the cop that sh instantly shot the man. And so the Marine took them to court and the police department lost their case because the Marine was able to prove he had the whole thing under control and that they were trying to cover up. Oh, wow. Yeah. So let me ask you this. In the comments, uh, Thrive Girl, this is a bold comment, but Thrive Girl in the comments says 80% of cops are corrupt. Is that number anywhere near true? That well, that's not it's Okay, it's it's more than likely it's it's like fifty two percent of cops are corrupt, but eighty percent of other of all cops will not report the bad cops. Which would make them essentially that's corrupt actually, then because yeah, that's actually a stat from a study. There is a there is a study on this. Damn, eighty percent. What would lead to something like that happening, where eighty percent of folks who are sworn to uphold the law will turn a blind They're eye? they scared. Done by somebody in blue. They're scared. They do not want to buck the system. They just want to get on with their day. They just want to fly under the weather. Yeah. Wow. And then it's that, brotherhood, and it's that brotherhood mentality. You got to protect the hood. Any idea what that study is called? Folks are just curious. Huh? Any idea what study came, came up with that information? Uh, it's actually, there. I have to look it up, but it, there is actually an article from the American Conservative magazine. It's still up because I use it as a reference and all the links to the study are in there. It says, sec, uh, says that battery by cops is pretty much, uh, I'm sorry, I'm outside my workplace. <laughs> and it's in the American Conservative, <laughs> that's the publication yeah. that has it, wow. <laughs> yeah, they did it. They did a well. Uh, there's another writer. His I, I'm trying to think of his name. Uh, he did a book on the warrior cop. I was one of his subjects. He talked to, um, but it's there is a book called the warrior cop: the militarization of police, and it's an ex excellent book that everybody should read. Okay, you're not normal by chance, are you? What? Norma, that name, Can you say that again? that's not, you would, huh? I, I don't know. Do you hear, is it your, your name is not Norma, is it? No, my name is okay. Dominica, it's Italian for Sunday. Okay, fair enough, my name fair is enough. Somebody, some of my internet sleuths asked that question, but I got to move it on, Dominica, you have definitely taken the air out of my cells in regards to the police, that is awful, but... Being from the actual profession itself, I have no other reason other than believe you. But come on back through any time, but I got to move it on. Okay. Good talk. Good talk. Wow. Um, and, oh, certainly, I'm not the know-it-all. I don't know every damn thing to come along, but it's always good to talk to the folks. It's amazing that some of the things you hear, just talking to real-world individuals that are out there earning a living just like yours truly. But, um... I don't eighty percent. Wow, you got. What do you guys think? Is that your observation as well? That eighty percent of police officers cannot be depended upon to point out a fellow officer that's involved in corruption. That is a very high number. Eighty percent, not eighty percent being corrupt, but eighty percent would watch corruption within their ranks and turn a blind eye to it. That's bad. That is really bad. I'm not saying I don't believe her. I'm certainly not saying that what she's saying probably is not true, but that is just really eye-opening bad. Uh, looking in the comments, uh, totally false, says Co-op79. I hope you are correct. I really would hope 80%. Damn, that's a lot. Um, host, read what Wikipedia says about Thin Blue Line. But can you trust Wikipedia? Anybody can alter 
the writings in Wikipedia. So I would I'll look it up, but anybody can uh, add anybody can edit Wikipedia. Uh, I believe it's maybe more than eighty percent. Says um, Ron Walcott. Damn. Yep, definitely more than half the police are corrupt. Shit, that's horrible. Uh, let me go back to the box. And I see another happily folk calling me another Uncle Tom. It's all good. It's always good. Mechanic, dude. I remember the 1980s film, Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. We used to say that as a kid. Dude, mechanic, dude, what's up? What's up, man? Uh, I've been watching your Not show. Not much. I appreciate you being here, man. You know how we do it. So what do you think? The thin blue line flag. The police chief in Los Angeles suggesting that that flag has been hijacked by white supremacists and racists. Therefore, he does not want his own officers displaying it. Think that's a good move? Well, I have to take it back a little bit. And sure. I think that the thin blue line thing kind of became more popular during the riots and the the uh, BLM and the Antifa stuff. I don't and, remember it before that. I don't yeah, remember yeah. it before Black Lives Matter. Right. And, um, you know, coming from where I used to live, I'm from Portland, Oregon. I live in Phoenix now. And I was around when all that stuff went down. And, you know, it was so bad. The the crime, The they got rid of the gang enforcement unit. There was a lot of things happening. A friend of mine got murdered. And it kind of changed my perspective on all of it because, it, sorry, I got my son. He's crying. Oh, Don't worry about it. Go ahead. Um, so basically, you know, when they when George Floyd was was murdered, you know, that was a very emotional thing for everybody. I mean, I cried. It was very, uh, you know, I was fully behind BLM. Well, wait, and all that wait, stuff. wait. It's not emotional. I got no shortage of guests that have come onto my program and said George Floyd died of COVID. You've seen Candace Owens for you, some of you folks out there. So when you say it was an emotional time, well, amongst conservatives, there are a lot of folks that suggest that he had it coming. So I'm not going to say everybody was emotional about it. Oh, I don't. You know, there are some people that probably say that, but just from a, a standpoint, is my. My um, sons and daughter, they're half black. So, and I firsthand witness the police and the racism. And knowing that and seeing what's, what's been going on in George Floyd and stuff, that hit me hard. And, but I believe he was you, murdered. Wait, you said your sons, was it, you said your sons are half black? Yes, yeah. My son, might, my daughter, I, might I ask? You don't have to answer, but I'm just wondering. Might I ask how old are they? My son is 15, and my have daughter you, is 13. Okay, so and you're and, okay. You are you you're black. What's that? You you you're not black, right? No, no, I'm white. So folks will someone you hear this from African Americans a lot. Where they'll say, "I have had to have quote unquote the talk with my child." Have you had anything like that with your child? Absolutely. What did my it son, consist of? Um, you know, I, I try not to sway my son either either way, left or right, politics wise. But I basically told him, I said, son, this world is built different for people of color. And it's unfair and life is unfair. And basically I just explained to him is that you gotta push past all of that, either for your workplace or for wherever you're dealing with. Um, you know, when you get pulled over from the police, you do as they tell you. You don't fight back. You don't resist. You don't do any of that stuff. Yeah. And, um, you know, it's it's sad that we have to have those conversations, but it is what it is, you know. And, and... Well, I'm, I'm going to say this. I want to just interject and say this. Even though I do believe, just simply listening to authorities, governors, mayors, that the police do treat African Americans differently... I would have to submit, though, it doesn't matter what skin color you are. You shouldn't be fighting with police to begin with. I mean, I, right. yeah, if you're black, if you're black, the outcome's probably going to be worse. But you probably shouldn't be doing that to begin with. Correct. Yeah. But so. kind of circling back behind the, uh, the Blue Lives Matter thing is, honestly, at first I looked at it as just something that would kind of, ban the community around supporting the police again 
And what I saw in Portland was absolute destruction, and it was scary, and it was horrible. And you talking about Chaz? What's that? You're talking about Chaz with Antifa and stuff Chaz, like that? When they, yeah, Chaz, the, Antifa, the police, the, the fire. The autonomous zone. It. It yeah, the really autonomous zone. Yeah, so yeah. where do we find the, the balance, you know what I mean? And if, if this is true, that the Blue Lives Matter flag is now being represented by these people, then it probably should be getting rid of. But we also have to understand that we need to support good policing. We need to raise awareness of it. How many stops do you think they ha- that happen in the, in the United States that go without any problems? It's kind of like, like, like how the news reports planes crashing and not planes taking off, in my opinion, the mm-hmm. analogy there. Well, here's my response to that. While I definitely believe the overwhelming majority of police stops do not have anything you know, nefarious going on, I would also submit to you that most of the bad policing you see on TV represents only a tiny fraction of it because most of the people who are mistreated by police do not die. Most oftentimes, maybe you get roughed up. Maybe you just simply get cussed out. Maybe you get searched against your will or something of that nature. And you feel that there's no hope in reporting it, so you just let it happen. I believe by far the vast majority of people who are mistreated by police, it doesn't make the news. I mean, if, if the police pull you over and ask, can I search your car? And you say, no, you can't do it without a warrant. And they just grab your ass and throw you on the ground and search it anyway. You can go down to the police and report that all you want. If it's not on camera, it's not going anywhere. And I do believe that that represents probably far more of the mistreatment. It's not the George Floyds or the Rodney Kings or people who face these horrible endings. It's folks who just have a civil right violated here or there. I can agree with that. Totally. Yeah. So, so both sides, whether good policing or bad policing, both of it is vastly underreported. I believe so, yeah. Yeah. Well, so I think we tend to both agree, though, that, you know, because we talk about the urban areas and people not snitching in the hood and stuff. I believe that's a problem. But we do both seem seem to agree that in the police departments, there is also a really big no snitching clause that is a problem. Absolutely. Um, I have a friend that's in the Portland Police Department, but we never really talk about... um, though in that regards but um you know he does talk about how everybody's like a brother you know to everybody hold, hold on hold on a second now rep 8319 is a he's MAGA and i don't he, he's pretty negative but i'm looking in this in the comments and you folks let me know I, i'll let you continue but this is in caps and i wanted to read it out he's saying breaking breaking democrats are going to ask biden to resign I'm very skeptical of that comment, but because it's in the comments, <laughs> I don't believe it. But no. I just want to make sure anybody else that happens to be tuned into the news right now, because that should obviously interrupt every damn channel out there. But go ahead, mechanic. I just saw that and wanted to entertain it. Oh, yeah, no problem. No, but basically, yeah. I have a friend of mine that's a Portland police officer. And, um, you know, he told me the inner workings and how they treat each other. And they're basically a family. And I think, you know, when you're a new police officer, you don't have a lot of leverage to report bad policing, especially if it's if it's from your sergeant or somebody above you. So my question is, is how can we support the good policing to where these guys gain some leadership where they can have an influence on people they're hiring? You know what I mean? Because that's yeah. what it comes down to. Well, one of the issues that needs to be, in my opinion, when it comes to re- redesigning the police or police reform, it needs to be against the law. If you see a bad, if you see a police doing something, you should have a duty to report it. Just like in school, if a child behaves in a certain way or they find out a child is getting whipped at home or something like that, the teachers have a duty to report. The police should have that same issue. In regards to the thin blue line, that would pretty much eradicate that. Because now if you see a cop do something wrong and you don't report it, you are committing a crime. Not something that you can be fired where you can quit and go work for a different department. It should be an actual crime. That is what they, that would probably be, in my opinion, one of the biggest uh, acts of reform that the police could have. Is some form of accountability to the point where, 
Yeah, if we can show on videotape, like for instance, George Floyd, we talked about that earlier. You got three other officers that are watching that take place. If that law was in place, they would have had to go and report Derek Chauvin that night. Like, this is a crime what you just did to this guy. We're not trained to sit on a guy with our hands in our pocket for nine straight minutes. But because that law does not exist, you often find out that the other cops that are sitting by watching these atrocities take place have altered their log books to reflect this as being okay. So that's what I think they need to do is make it so that you are accountable by law. When you say you're going to you know, serve and protect, if you see a law being violated, the fact that the guy has a badge on is violating the law should not excuse you from reporting it. Yeah, I agree with you. Yeah. And I, I do believe, I'm not sure, I can't really quote the law, but isn't there a law where if it, like a citizen sees something going wrong or a good Samaritan law or something like that, where if they don't do anything and, and, and interact with some sort of like, let's say um, somebody was getting killed or beat up or something and you do nothing. Isn't there some law? I don't think so. No, I don't, I don't think there's any good, good Samaritan law. I mean, it could be something depending on different locations, but nationwide, I don't, I don't think so. I've never heard of that. Oh, because so I see some folks in the comments disagreeing. There are people in the comments that yes, there is. I haven't heard of that. So, like I said, I don't know everything. So, I'd be curious because I was I'm coming from the south side of Chicago. I don't turn the way, turn and look the other way on some bullshit too. So, I need to find out if I'm not guilty of a few crimes because I'm yeah, I'm straight from the south side. I don't see all types of shit. So, I got to <laughs> right. move it on though, mechanic. Uh, thanks, dude. Good talk, man. Come on through any time. All right, folks, looking back in the comment. Elected officials are sworn to specific laws that the general public are not. Supreme Court ruled that it is not the duty of cops to protect. That was horrible for that to happen. Uh, so tell me what their job is. You're right. The Supreme Court did rule that. Why the hell... You know, other than just to simply protect police officers, would you give them an out like that? Well, th th it is not their job to serve and protect when it's written on the same side of the damn car they're driving it. I don't understand how the Supreme Court could be that pro-police to let some shit like that get by. But, it, yeah, it did get by. Abs Good Samaritan law absolutely exists. I have never heard of that, uh, Angela, but if you say so, I'm going to look that up. Is that a nationwide thing? Is that different from state to state? What do you have a duty to report? Let's say you witness a hit and run accident. Do you by law have to report it? So when they say good Samaritan law, does it cover every single crime that's out there? Or is there specific types? Is there other than dialing 911? Are there other actions you must take? I'm really curious. I didn't know that. And as always, I get always, I'm always educated from the folks. This is a MAGA friendly program. I always enjoy speaking to folks on the other side of the aisle. We're able to do it somehow, some way. Maybe we can blame the gods, but we're able to have civilized dialogue in here, even though we have passionately different opinions. And the only aim of doing this is to show that if I can speak to a bunch of folks on the right, a bunch of folks on the right can speak, and we can do this in civilized fashion, they can do the same shit in Washington. They're just not trying. That's the only goal of this, is to show that this type of dialogue, even in a tribal world, is possible. All you have to do is give it a shot. Uh, looking in the comments, MAGA nut. <laughs> I don't know. I've never nutted on somebody who represents as MAGA. Although there are some really attractive MAGA women out there. Uh, Democrats destroyed my relatives by using the Shabuta Bridge. Rep, you have lost all credibility. You are a friend of the program. You're always welcome on the program. But to interrupt the program and suggest that it was breaking news that the Democrats were going to suggest that Biden resigns and for that not to be true you've lost all credibility as always folks it is that time of day this is a lunch break live i always appreciate you guys rolling with your boy you could be anywhere you want to be on social media the fact that you're in here with your boy is always an honor as always i do not ban block or censor anyone this is a maga friendly program maga are my preferred guests nevertheless i am an employed man and i gotta get back to work I got to go. It's your boy Tim, the handsome liberal. Y'all take care.